I found the easiest weekly dividends portfolio ever. Just four stocks that are gonna pay you 11% dividend and put cash in your pocket every single week. I'll reveal those four stocks, but stick around and I'll show you how easy this is and an alternative portfolio with every monthly dividend stock. First up is a popular one, Main Street Capital, ticker M-A-I-N, with its 7% dividend yield. But if you don't like Maine, I'm gonna show you next how to find the stocks that are gonna substitute for it. Now, Main Street is a business development corporation, a BDC, specializing in loans and equity investments into mid-sized businesses. Think of BDCs as a bank for companies too big for your typical regional bank, but also still too small to issue shares. Loans are typically for leveraged buyouts, growth financing, and acquisitions. Nearly 200 companies are represented in the loan portfolio here, with none more than 3% of the portfolio value, so you've got that safety and diversification through loan type, industry, and geographically. Lately, we are seeing more of those loans that would go to the regional banks shift to the BDCs as that traditional bank financing for smaller businesses dries up during the crisis, and it could mean a boom in interest income for BDCs like Main Street. The portfolio has an average yield on its debt of 12.4%, which is well above that 7% dividend. That means Main Street is gonna have no problem covering that dividend. In fact, the company has never decreased its monthly dividend rate and has increased it by 109% since the 2007 IPO. It's also paid special dividends of 60 cents a share over the past 12 months. Now something else to consider when you're looking at these BDC stocks is whether the company is internally or externally managed. Now, some of these hire outside finance companies to manage the portfolio, which can lead to those higher expenses and management incentives that just aren't aligned with shareholder return. Main Street is internally managed, which means it has its own team running that portfolio, operating on just 1.4% operating expenses to total assets, well below the average for other BDCs. And looking at the dividend history here, we see that Main Street usually goes ex-dividend during the first week of the month, usually between the fifth and the seventh day. We're just getting started on our dividend list, but just as important as those four stocks is how this is going to work. I'm gonna highlight my favorite monthly dividend stocks here on our list, but I just wanna show you how I put this together so you can recreate it if you need to. It's super easy. Just search for any monthly dividend stock here in Yahoo and go to the historical data tab. Here, you'll wanna change the time period to five years and to show dividends only and click apply. That's gonna show you the ex-dividend dates for the stock for every dividend back five years. You can see here, Global Water Resources tends to go ex-dividend in the third week of the month, usually between the 14th and the 16th. And from there, it's just a matter of writing down when each monthly dividend stock goes ex-dividend, which week of each month. Another popular one here, Realty Income, tends to go ex-dividend in the last week, between the 28th and the 31st of the month. Now remember though, that ex-dividend date is gonna be different from the day you actually get that dividend. The ex-dividend date is the first day the stock trades without the dividend. Listen to that again because it is hugely important. If you buy the stock on the ex-dividend date or later, you will not get that current dividend until one comes around the next month. You need to buy and hold these before that ex-dividend date. Now the payment date, the day you actually see that dividend hit your account is usually a week or two after this ex-dividend date, but by planning your dividend stocks like this with that staggered approach where we have at least one monthly going ex-dividend each week, you're gonna end up getting that dividend payment every week as well. The jump in oil prices last year gave Saving Royalty Trust, ticker SBR, not only one of the highest dividend yields in the group at 11.7%, but also the highest total return. Sabine has an oil and gas portfolio that covers over 2 million acres in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Reserves on assets are estimated to produce at least for another eight to 10 years, and the parent company regularly explores for new assets. Now understand here, this one is gonna be all about oil prices. Even if the price of crude does come down from the recent highs, stocks like Sabine are gonna be cash machines, but one thing to consider is that these payments on these are highly volatile. Basically, the company owns a royalty share of the revenue collected on those oil assets and then contractually pays out the majority of that to shareholders. It has almost no management responsibility, just collecting those checks and then passing them on, but the size of that dividend does change directly with oil prices from month to month. From the history of dividends here, we can see that Sabine Royalty typically goes ex-dividend in the second week of the month, around the 12th through the 14th of each month. We've still got two more weeks for that dividend cash flow, but first, I wanna personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. 
Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for that sign up link below. Another popular monthly payer here with Gladstone Commercial, ticker GOOD, and it's 10.5% dividend yield. And I'm glad this one came up because they actually recently cut their dividend, but I still think it's a solid payer with some great upside. The company is a real estate investment trust, a REIT with more than 15 million square feet at 122 properties in 28 states across the United States. Just over half the properties are office space with another 41% industrial, along with some retail and medical office. Leases are spread across 106 tenants in 19 industries. So this is a REIT with multiple property type and tenant diversification. Now, obviously the market for that office property is on full on crisis mode and will likely weaken further, but vacancy rates for other property types are still strong. Occupancy across the company's portfolio has held up at 96% and the average lease term of seven and a half years means a lot of stability in that cash flow. REITs overall lost 25% of their value last year on those higher interest rates and as soon as the Fed starts cutting next year, I think that's gonna be the impetus for a turnaround in the property market and for shares here. There's also support for that from the CFO and other insiders that picked up more shares recently. It wasn't a huge buy at just $90,000 in stock, but it is a vote of confidence for the company. Now, as mentioned, Gladstone did cut the dividend recently to protect that cash flow, but it should be enough to keep that payment stable now until the rebound in the industry. And checking the dividend history here, we do see that dividend cut in January, but still makes for a solid double digit yield and usually going X dividend here in the third week of each month. We've still got that fourth week dividend stock to highlight, but there's an underappreciated reason. I think every investor needs dividend stocks. If not something like this weekly portfolio, then at least monthly dividends. I asked longtime citizens of the Bowtie Nation, Brian and Crystal, about this once, and their answer changed how I thought about dividends. The best feeling about <laughs> investing is definitely when the dividends roll in, man. It, it just makes your day. Crystal gets so excited. <laughs> I'll text him and yeah. say, Abby just declared a dividend, uh, yeah, I and mean, I have so many shares, and this is how much I'm going to get. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's great. I mean, how can you beat it? And that is it. Folks, there are a lot of channels here on YouTube that will tell you not to invest in dividends, that it's growth stocks all the way, but they miss that feeling that you can only get from seeing the cash flow hit your account. That kind of motivation, the constant reminder of why you're investing and to keep putting your money to work, that is priceless. And just beyond that motivation, now, I reinvest my dividends now, but I also know that when I do need them, I'm always gonna have that regular income to pay the bills and help support my family. So we'll get right back to our dividend list, but I wanna know, what's your motivation to invest? Let me know in the comments, why do you do it and what keeps you investing? I've saved our highest yield for last, an AGNC investment, ticker AGNC, but stick around for that alternative portfolio and a full schedule of monthly payers next. AGNC is a special type of real estate company, a mortgage REIT. Now these REITs borrowed money on short-term rates, then leveraged that up borrowing two or three times as much to invest in long-term mortgages. This is the interest rate on repurchase agreements, a special overnight short-term rate many mortgage REITs use. And you can see it's been at almost nothing for much of the last decade. Now they use that borrowed money and other capital to invest in mortgages with higher rates here. So if you take that 7% interest received on a 30-year mortgage minus the 3% rate they pay on that borrowed money, it's a very profitable business and great dividend cash flow. AGNC holds a $56 billion portfolio of these mortgages, 92% of them in that 30 year fixed terms and most of those in safe agency backed mortgages. Now, there are a few things you wanna watch for here when you're investing in these mortgage REITs. First is that book value per share, the graph on the top right here. AGNC is now trading at about $9 a share, a discount to that book value of assets of $10.30 a share, which is a great place to be as an investor. You also wanna pay attention to that net interest spread, the graph on the lower left. That's the difference between the rate on the mortgages the company buys and its cost of borrowing or that repo rate. You can see here in that net interest spread, the company's profitability has been increasing, which is always something you wanna see. Now understand, with these very high yield dividend stocks, you're usually sacrificing price returns for that higher dividend. Mature companies in mature industries just aren't gonna produce a 15% plus return on equity. If they did, it would bring in the competition, which would then bring down the return. You might get a high ROE in growth stocks, but not in these dividend names. So what you usually see here is lower prices over time. Now that means that these are really best for older investors that don't plan on selling those shares, but instead are just gonna cash out that dividend each and every month. And looking at the dividend history for AG&C, we see that it isn't much growth, but it has protected that per share amount 
and usually goes ex-dividend the last week between the 28th and the 30th of the month. Here's that full list of 30 monthly dividend stocks when they go ex-dividend by week. And you can see the problem here is that there are only three stocks going ex-dividend in those first and second weeks. There are lots of great alternatives to pick from in those last two weeks, like LTC Properties or Pennant Park, ticker PFLT in the third week, or Realty Income, ticker O, and Prospect Capital, ticker PSEC in the last week but you're really limited in those first two weeks if you wanna plan that weekly cash flow. An alternative portfolio here might include the Whitestone REIT, ticker WSR for its first week and a 5.5% dividend, then Armor Residential, ticker ARR, another mortgage REIT, and almost 20% dividend in the second week. With those, I also like Gladstone Investment, ticker GAIN for the third week, and maybe Stag Industrial, ticker STAG for the fourth week. I'll be doing the same strategy with monthly paying ETFs next week that are gonna give you even more options for those first two weeks. So make sure you join the community by tapping that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Now, another option here, if you don't like some of the stocks in a particular week, would be to double up on the last week's list. So you've got a super shot of dividends paid out in one week that can carry on through the next. Most of these are high double digit dividend payers that make for great additions to a portfolio. Get the weekly bow tie free with the link below or click on the video to the right for the seven monthly dividend stocks that will pay your mortgage. Seven stocks to put a roof over your head. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.